Well, welcome to this week's edition of Mainly Motorsports, and I always get excited when Archie's in the house. It's never, not every day I get to sit next to a, a former Thursday <laughs> Thunder uh, winner over there from Beecher's yeah. Motor Speedway. You know, the season's uh, coming up pretty quick. It's gone by, and uh, I make my annual stop in to Mainly Motorsports to tell you what's going on for 19, so we're looking forward to a, to a good year for next year. We've had some big news come out of your camp, you know. Uh, everybody was waiting, you know. It wasn't no secret Matt was leaving, and he yeah. left to the 95 team. Yeah. Great run that you guys had together. It just, yeah. it gelled. Yeah. But in all good relationships, whether you're talking about a marriage, and it sounds <laughs> stupid to say that, you get to the point where you can't go no further. It seemed like you guys were, like you would, you'd reach that pinnacle. You know, and you were still, yeah. you know. Yeah, it was not the for... money couldn't fix, though. You yeah. know, well, yeah. $10 million <laughs> could have fixed the relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, no we, you're right. I mean, I think that's where it was. We were at a point where, um, you know, we need to bring more money into the team to go faster, and he wanted to win races, so we, you know, we agreed that, uh, you know, it was time to move on. Still great friends. Yeah. Um, you know, he's a good kid. Helped our program a lot. I think we helped his career a lot. So it was kind of mutually beneficial to both. And uh, we're happy moving on uh, with what we're doing. And I think he's going to be happy where he's at. So it'll be an exciting season in 19. And you say with what we're doing, Corey LaJoy. Yeah. You know, another, what I call dynamic personality. You know, sure. a great guy that hasn't forgotten his roots. Work to get where he's at. Much yeah. like Matt. Work to get where they're at. Yeah, I think... Uh, you know, we, we call ourselves a blue-collar race team, and I think, uh, you know, Corey fits right in there. He can build a car, he can fix a car, and he can drive a car. I mean, in his, in his regular job, you know, he's been welding uh, race seats for his dad, Randy, who has a great history. New England roots, which we always love. You know that. When we try to get a driver in, we try to make sure we have as many New England people. Um, and this is a good fit for us. I, think, I don't think we're going to miss a beat, to be honest with you. I think with the new racing style, with the 22 plate races that we're bringing forward in 19, I think it's going to be exciting. Our best races, we've got three top tens in the, in the speedway races. So there's 22 races. Everything from uh, Darlington at a mile and a third on up is going to be uh, a plate race. So we'll be running about 550 horsepower. We'll be racing in packs, and I think uh, that's, good for, that's good for us to have some good finishes. So we're looking for many more top tens, and maybe we can squeak out a win before it's over. You know, last year at Daytona, you saw us oh, uh, running third with two laps to go. It was, uh, it was pretty close, and we were hoping the first and second guys wrecked, and uh, we might have snuck through. But unfortunately, the fourth guy knocked us out, and, <laughs> and uh, we didn't we finished 27th. But with two laps to go, I, I have it on my phone, a picture of the scoreboard. just keeps you motivated when oh, you look up there with two laps to go. You just said that. My hair was standing yeah. up again. <laughs> Again, because it yeah. brought me back to sitting in the living room, oh, yeah. screaming and Ooh. jumping up and down, and like yeah. thinking to myself, I got to go get the camera. I gotta, I'm going to get an interview with him for my victory lane because you yeah. promised me. And yeah, well, yeah, well, we needed rain. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, but no, how? Yeah, take a moment like that. And yeah, when we correct. talked about it the next yeah. day when you guys, you and Bruce, were on the the golf cart tour somewhere, still partying <laughs> <Yeah>. with, <laughs> with a wrecked race car and stuff. But what does that feel like? I mean, uh, none of us around here can compare to that. You know? I'll tell you, um, you know, it's funny that I, I was in the motorhome at that time because I broke my toe, getting my big toe getting out of the shower. A weird thing, but I was in the infield care center. They taped me up, said there's nothing they can do for me. They said, it's a broken toe, big deal. So I, I was, in, <laughs> me and Bruce were in the motor coach, and we kept looking, you know, 11th place, 10th place, 8th place, 6th place. And I'm looking, and he goes, He's walking around, and he goes, Jesus, we could win this damn thing. And I go, yeah, don't tell me. Just be quiet, Bruce. I hate it's yeah. go time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a couple laps to go. I got my foot draped up over there over the coffee table thinking, man, this is something different. If we win this thing, you know, and it's happened. How many times have you seen it? Oh, yeah. Where the first and second car go to the end and bounce off each other, and the guy in third or fourth wins the thing, you know. Yeah. So that was pretty exciting uh, until, uh, you know, with two laps to go when, when it all came apart. And then... Uh, you go, oops, that's racing. And now I look at the, you know, I look at the stats and I see 27th place finish. I just, for one, you know, they say there's no pictures in the scorebook. There's one time I wish there was a picture in the scorebook on that one. So, yeah. but that's, uh, hey, that keeps you coming back. I mean, that was exciting. I had 200 and something texts from different people about, man, you almost had it. Everybody in every bar in Maine, I think, was jumping up and down in every house where people were having a 500 party just hoping. So, and that's, that's generated a ton of fans from Maine. Which, and that's, Kind of one of the reasons we do this. We just love the state of Maine and the racing fans that are here, and they're just super people. And to get all that, it just keeps us motivated to go back and, and give it a go and, and hopefully do it again. Well, this is one of the unique things, and we talk about it. You know, we all, that's a dream of everybody, you know, whether they want to be a spotter like Derek Nealon or sure. a car like you or a driver like Jimmy Johnson. That's the pinnacle of short track. When we all started that first time, that's the pinnacle. That's where sure. you want to be. 
well, you, you know, we're all there through you. Right. And, and I think it's neat, and, and you've got to admit, over the last few years, the growth of popularity for Go Fast Racing oh, sure. has grown yeah, no. because of, you know, your, you know, the performances like that. Yeah. Matt and yourself and everybody out there doing a great job with social media. People are aware of, of, of this little team from Maine. Yeah. But, I mean, basically based down there. But Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think in any sport you look at, everybody loves the underdog. Yep. Don't we? I mean, we oh. want the underdog to win. Yep. When we see a, a big team go on TV, whatever sport it happens to be, uh, whether it's a boxing match or something, we always want the underdog to have a shot. And that's us pretty much every week. But really, we get better, we get better. And, and, and I look and I say, wow, when this is all said and done, 10, 20 years, who knows when, I can say, man, we raced 15 to 20 times in Daytona 500. That's not bad, yeah. bad for racing from, like you say, Thursday Thunder. For winning at Thursday Thunder, I just got to win at Daytona. Yeah. That will be the, that'll be the, you know, the top of the top of the ladder, right there. No, absolutely, <laughs> and and uh, just to be a part of all that and, and yeah. rub the elbows with the other the other owners that you know, obviously, uh, um, we don't get to hear your name much with the Fox broadcast and all yeah. that with the other Hendricks and the Gibbs sure. and all that, but uh, you know. It is pretty nice when uh, when they do talk about that little team, that little 32 team that's uh, yeah. right there in the mix, you know? Oh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, the owners meet, the owners' council, team owner council, uh, meets four times a year. And Hendricks, Penske, Gibbs, Childress, all those guys are in a room about 20 by 20, and that's pretty exciting to hear the stuff going back and forth. We all have the same concerns, you know? Control cost, let anybody be able to win, um, you know, different types of rules that we favor, we, we don't favor. Um, but just to hear those guys, you know, our, our race, our concerns that we want to be able to transfer a set of tires from Xfinity to the Cup to those guys worrying about $20,000 pit guns, you know. So everybody has a concern, no matter what level you're at. And we try to all get together in that room four times a year and work it all out with NASCAR. And, uh, and NASCAR does their best at trying to keep a level playing field. Doesn't always work. But I can tell you right now, folks, in 2019, you watch the racing because we did it at Charlotte in the All-Star Race. And... Our car, after 20 laps, those 20 lap segments, was two seconds off the front of the pace. And normally, without that package that we'll be running at 22 races, we'd probably be 15 to 20 uh, seconds off the pace on, on, a lap, on, on 20 laps. And going forward, if we're two seconds off, there conceivably could be 30 cars on the lead lap on a green-white checkered, which is on these mile and a half tracks, which is going to make it exciting. I guarantee it'll be a lot more exciting everybody to tune in and start watching these races starting off at Atlanta or Vegas California these are all going to be plate races now so they're going to be running in packs and picture Atlanta as fast as Atlanta is with 30 cars going down that chute down the back stretch you know with uh, with that, that downforce package um, going 200 miles an hour in one pack that's going to be pretty darn exciting I would say no I would guess so and uh it be expensive on the pocketbook too in some of these races. Well, you know that's uh, that's our goal. I mean, we're gonna our, our top ten finishes have been at the super speedways, and our goal is we run in the second pack, let the big boys do what they're gonna do. Somebody's gonna make a mistake, and there's gonna be the big one. You might be seeing the big one 22 times this year, not four <laughs> times. Yeah. So our goal is to stay back, settle in, and then when it's go time, you know, with 50 laps left, just cross your fingers and go for it, and see what we can do. But we're gonna wreck some equipment. Uh, you know, we're hoping the better finishes. Um, that we'll have uh, because of some of these cars wrecking or, or us going up on the draft and pack and running in packs will will cover the cost of, of wrecking cars but uh, usually we start off the season with eight uh, I mean with six cars but when we go to Daytona we'll have eight cars finished we've got two completed now um, another one will be done next week so we really need one car a week coming out of our shop we hang our own bodies but we plan on having those eight cars ready when we head to Daytona. We come back, not much time to play after you go to Daytona. You come back, you go to Atlanta, and then you make the 18-day West Coast swing. So we've got to have we've got to have all our ducks lined up for, for when we head to Daytona in the truck. No, yeah. absolutely. I want to take a break. We come back, and I want to talk a little bit more about uh, the 2019 driver, Corey LaJoy, and a uh, little history there. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> who comes back from a few years, but... Uh, Talk about how exciting it is for this year and some of the sponsors that are on board. So we'll take a break and we'll be right back with Archie St. Hilaire. Hi, I'm Scott from Scott Check Creation. We just had the biggest month in our history. Why? We're selling campers at wholesale to the public, even the 2019s. So what did we do? We went out and bought a bunch more. Up to 40% off travel trailers and fifth wheels. Up to 35% off toy haulers. Up to 30% off motorhomes. You'll never see these prices again. Over 400 campers to choose from, all at wholesale prices. Scott's Recreation, Route 4 Turner and Route 202 Manchester, Maine. 
Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by LKQ Core. Any part, any repair, anywhere. Located on Route 202 in Gorham. Wiscasset Speedway, Maine's biggest and fastest, with $5 admission every weekend and loads of family fun. Check us out at wiscassetspeedway.com. Bentley Saloon, Route 1 in Arundel. Stop by and see why me and my friends say, who has more fun than us? We do. We're back here with Archie St. Hilaire, and uh, boy, it's been seven years, eight years, really, uh, almost nine years yeah. since you met Corey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, uh, a lot of people might not know the history, but uh, Alan Tardif, you were you know, yeah. early years in in K N N racing, uh, running at Loudon. Uh, you know, a track at, at that time was as big a deal to you as oh, what sure. Daytona is yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. And I uh, want to always have a good showing, and we were putting on a showing for the ages that day. Alan had put himself and the team in position. Hi, to I'm win Sean at Moody. Race. We yeah. take Against, pride in our facilities, and, when and at Moody's, the is what's inside the that K-Nan matters. Oh, yeah. Development programs, you know. Exactly. We believe we had, it's uh, more than just the you know, exterior. Man, the the was in the 18 it's car what's inside that place, matters. Uh, with a Gibbs car. Restoring the structure um, of your vehicle, uh, the fact respects is critical to your safety. I'm proud of our Moody's co-worker owners who understand the importance of protecting your valuable asset. And we all know what our most valuable asset is. It's what's inside that matters. Back then, when you had that. The uh, spec motor, I think it was interesting that, you know, we could run with the best of them at any of the tracks. And a lot of the tracks were short tracks, so it took a lot of driver to, to get the job done. And Alan was doing a great job that day. Um, you know, we were, uh, you know, I was, I was watching him go by, and we were in, I think we started eighth place that day or something, qualified like eighth. And he was, you know, going up through the field, doing a great job. Um, and then we got up to, uh, like, second. And then on a restart, you know, we walked away from Ryan Truex in a wall trip car. And then... Uh, here comes a guy that I didn't know a lot about. I knew about his dad, I didn't know much about him. Corey LaJoy comes along. Well, both those guys raced a heck of a race for about six or seven laps, uh, right door to door. It's on, if you look on YouTube, you'll see it in 2010 K&N race. But very interesting, you know, winding down to the end. And uh, all of a sudden, um, you know, with one lap to go, um, we're a little ahead of Corey, not much, by a bumper or so. And then, uh, you know, going into three, he said he hit the bumps on the road course. That's what he told me the other day anyway, but whatever it was. <laughs> he went in a little deep uh, uh, going into three and uh, and took Allen out and uh, ruined uh, one, what I thought was going to be a win. You know, as the laps trickled down, I thought, boy, we're going to have a good finish here. And I go, wait a minute, we're going to win this damn thing. So uh, great to be at your home track. That's what we consider, you know, Loudon all the time when we're there is our home track and thinking, boy, we got to win here. And then some guy I didn't know a lot about comes in and ruins that day. And uh, the, the only thing was, as I told uh, Corey the other day, at least he took himself out. So it wasn't that he dumped us and won the race. So in the end, Ryan Truex uh, ended up winning that race. But it was a great time. And I had gone over to his dad, Randy, who I'd known well. And I said, Randy, your kid will never drive in any of my cars, ever, 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 after what he just did. And uh, so when we signed Corey, I had to call his dad and say, look, I lied to you. Uh, <laughs> we're going to sign your kid today. And, uh, you know, we're going to... Uh, you know, I mean, Corey's the type of guy that, um, you know, there's two types of drivers out there, the type you got to whip and the type you got to hold the reins back on. And he's definitely the type that you got to hold the reins back on. I mean, he had, he finished second. I know a lot of people don't know. He finished second in the K&N series one year with five, I think it was like 13 or 14, with five wins out of 14 or 15 races to a young guy named Kyle Larson, who look where he's at today. So um, he's got three ARCA wins, six K&N wins. So um, we're putting him in a little better equipment. It's not top-level equipment, but better, his best equipment he's ever driven. Um, so we're hoping to have some good finishes and kind of not lose a beat from where we left off with Matt. You know, we're hoping to run with Matt every week and uh, with Corey. So I think it's going to be exciting to uh, to give him something. And he's back with Ford horsepower, which he's always liked, and the guys over at uh, Roush Yates really like Corey. So I think it's going to be exciting that we'll give him a little more horsepower and see what he can do with it and, uh, you know, have some decent finishes. No, I think it's exciting. And like I said earlier in the show, you haven't missed a beat. Matt did a great job with the fans, yep. did a great job promoting Go Fast Racing. Um, and I think Corey's going to do the same thing. He has a lot of, good, lot of friends, a lot of social media. Yeah, he has a yep. big following. Yeah, and, he and, he, and like you said, he's blue collar. He's yeah, that blue right. collar guy. Yeah. You know, he, yep. He's just not showing up with his helmet in a bag. You know? no. And I, I remember talking to people years ago, and the, we, the next what we call the next generation that come yep. up through. And, and the first name that comes to mind for me, that a kid that could take the car and put it all together was a Ryan Moore. Right. You know, Austin yep. Terrio, exactly. another guy. You know, a yep. lot of these kids, uh, they can't. They they right. just didn't grow up in the garages. Yeah. They grow exactly. up, you know, the video games, the studying in school, and they just, sure. you know, they just didn't have that knowledge. So that's that's a big deal, you know, yeah. a little bit more. Oh, yeah, sure. You know, He's Kyle at the Bush, shop already. Yeah, uh, there you go. The best of the best. Yep. One of the few guys exactly. that can do that. Yep. When, they, when you're getting feedback from these guys, 
they know it. I mean, uh, you know, when Corey didn't know where his career was going, he went out on the on the K&N West tour, and they invited him over to be a crew chief for David Mayhew, and they won three races. Yeah. So he could crew chief too. Chad Knauss contacted him about four years ago, wanted to bring him in as a car chief, and said, we could use you over here. We'll get you through the ranks, and you could be, you know, the next big crew chief in the business. And he said, well, my driving days aren't done yet, but I'll definitely keep that in mind. So he's been at the shop already working on the car, you know, putting seats in. Uh, bringing the seats over. That's one good advantage this year. We'll have free seats. Those seats aren't cheap, you know. So we'll have uh, <laughs> so we a seat sponsor. Yeah, exactly. We have a seat sponsor. That'll save us some money. So, yeah, yeah we're looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. No, pretty exciting. And, uh, you know, how about apparel? We got we got any apparel going to be coming out this oh, year? Oh, yeah, we'll have, uh, we'll have all, our, all our garb. Uh, we have it. It's just that it's so tough, you know, in the Fanatics trailer um, that they have all the Ford guys and we're stuck over in the corner. But we still sell a little bit. Matt was pretty good on the social media. We sold a lot of a lot of stuff. I mean, we're not selling stuff like Chase Elliott when you get 50 people waiting in line to buy a shirt, but we have some, and we'll have some online and also at the tracks. No, awesome. Now, how about, uh, now, he's a perfect guy uh, for those nights before the, the Loudon race, the Bentleys. He, he'll fall right in love with that place. Oh, yeah, I'm sure the, the whole crew will be up there. And okay. actually, uh, we're talking to Bentley about a real big show this summer. Uh, with some with some big names coming in for that same weekend and uh, having some fun over there. So yeah, but he'll uh, you know he'll fit right in coming up to Bentley's for our you know just before the race on that Thursday. Uh, it'll be fun. No, absolutely. So uh, we're looking forward to it. You know we're following you and uh, I'll be ready. Uh, you know Daytona 500 day. I'll have the camera with me and uh, we'll get that interview from Victory Lane or before you guys start your golf cart tour. There you go. <laughs> but uh, no, pretty exciting and uh, some new sponsors. You know, oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. We, uh, you know, we have uh, some of the uh, existing ones are coming back. I mean, CorvetteParts.net is, uh, you know, keen parts people. Been with us for seven or eight years. Great people. Um, uh, Corey's bringing over a company that does some flooring, Schluter, uh, Schluter Industries. They're actually a German company based out of Plattsburgh, New York, a great big sponsor. Uh, Molly Strong is a guy that owns some pharmacies. He's uh, you know, helping us out big time this year. And then uh, Dude Wipes and some other companies, all the existing guys, Alpha Canvas, uh, you know, pretty much everybody had Zach Products gives us product sponsorship. So, you know, all those little things, the little stickers on our car really help us out because we're a small budget team. We're still, you know, in the $6 million budget competing against guys with $30 million budgets. But in 2021, keep your eyes open because those budgets may all shrink. NASCAR is looking at a new model where, you know, you may have a limit on what you can spend. And I think it's going to be exciting for, uh, for all the small teams to really close the gap. So I think we're, we're trying to make a lot of changes. I know a lot of people... You know, it's, it's, a lot of people don't handle change well, but I'll tell you the changes we're making, it's all the way from Hendrick on down past us that people really want to see change. A lot of close racing, and I think in 19 with these 22 races, that's the start of it right there where you see some good finishes and, and a lot of wrecking, and I think that's what sells tickets. Unfortunately, as an owner, <laughs> I hate to hear that, but that's what sells tickets, and at this point in the business, we need to sell tickets and get people watching and more people watching again and get that young demographic up there. And I think with the new Mustang, I mean, that's one thing we haven't talked about much is that we're going away from the Ford Fusion, going to the Ford Mustang and Fords. And I think it's an exciting car and, and a, a young kid, you know, wanting to get into sport or like the sport is definitely more excited about a Mustang than a Ford Fusion, even though a Ford Fusion was a great car, had one myself, <laughs> but the Mustang is a, is a real great car. Mason just bought one. Um, and uh, they're a sharp car, and I think it's going to be uh, it's going to be fun watching those go around the track at Daytona. Now you talk about budgets. If you could get Robbie Mayetta with Pleasant Hill Auto Sales and Peter Pettit with Peter Pettit Excavation to reach a little bit deeper in those pockets, yeah, you know, that might close the gap because they got their decals always going around the race Yeah, tracks. the problem with those two guys is they seem to have the same seamstress that just sews up those pants, the pockets, <laughs> and every time they reach, they just stumble their fingers, so yep. they can't do it. But we're hoping they step up. Uh, you know, Peter's always been a great supporter, and Robbie, um, and, uh, you know, they're looking for all the fame, but we really like to see him dig deep. And then, of course, nine-time Mike Maeda, he's always helping us out somehow, connecting us with sponsors and stuff like that. So we'll look for a special appearance with him, maybe up in Augusta. You never know if we can drag him Who's up. Is nine-time coming? You're well, coming we'll, we'll up? Are you going to be yeah, around? We're, we're going to bring him up. I'll see if I can get him in the car and get I'm him up I'm going to tell you one, promise you one thing. When 99 shuts down, we ain't telling you what room we're in. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a lot of fun. No, that's good. I look forward to that show. It's a yeah, great show. No, it is. And we uh, we all follow you, and uh, mainly Motorsports does all they can to keep the word going. And uh, we're the biggest fans you got right here in Maine. I mean, I don't know. Robbie Mayetta is a bigger fan than me. But I'll be the <laughs> second biggest yeah. fan. You're the two biggest fans we have, yeah. for sure. But yeah. I, I just want to tell everybody, you know, those 22 races, plate races, are going to be exciting. Keep your eyes starting at Daytona, but don't lift off there. They're going to be great all the way through the season. Everything from a mile and a third on up, that's a lot of races. 
is going to be a plate race running in packs. So keep your eyes open and, uh, you know, when you go to the bathroom break, be, be quick because when you come back, there may be a pile of them all over the track. So Yeah, and be cheering on the Go Fast number 32 with uh, new driver Corey LaJoy. I'm going to take a break and we'll be back here on Mainly Motorsports. For a trusted name in residential and commercial site work in the Southern Maine area, call Peter Pettit Excavating. We can handle everything from the complete house lot to those nasty water and sewer line repairs. Septic systems are another area that we specialize in. During the snow season, Pettit Excavating has the equipment to handle any size job. And when the race season arrives, be sure to follow the number 7 Hewitt's Family Restaurant Chevrolet on the past Super Late Model Tour. Call 207-282-9305 to get the job done right. That's Peter Pettit Excavating. Don't deal with just anybody to seal coat your driveway or business this season. Call Black Magic. They bring over 20 years of experience in seal coating and crack filling. Black Magic's skilled team makes sure the job is always done right. On schedule with quality workmanship at a fair price. Protect your investment in your driveway by getting it sealed with Black Magic. Ooh, Black Magic. My name is Scott. This is Devin. We're the owners of Black Magic Seal Coating. Let us earn your business today. You'll be glad you did. Patman's Redemption and Agency Liquor Store is located at 95 Tanberg Trail in Wyndham, Maine. With over 400 feet of hard liquor and 15 doors of ice cold beer and soda, Patman's can handle all of your beverage needs. And if it's wine on your agenda, we have over 300 varieties in stock. Then when the party's over, Patman's can handle all of your main returnables, and we welcome all bottle drives. And if you're late for the race, drop off the bottles and pick up the cash at your convenience. Hey, this is Patman himself. Just letting you know that Patman's is your one-stop shop for all your thirsty needs. Welcome back to Mainly Motorsports, and we're here with another special guest, um, Spencer Morris, um, from the past Modified series. Um, as we just saw, um, Steve introed the show with um, Archie St. Hilaire from Go Fast Racing. So, what's your take on that? Like, how cool is it to see like a guy like locally from Maine here in Old Orchard mm -hmm. Beach um, having success in the um, like higher ranks of NASCAR? No, it's really awesome. Um, I was really excited to see um, their success, especially last year with with the Benedetto, and now they've like got the joy coming on board. Um, it's a real New England team now, you know, uh, with LaJoy being from Connecticut early on. Um, and it's, these guys are short track racers. And that's exactly what NASCAR needs is more short track racers. Um, you know, my, my, I get a LaJoy seat in my mod. Um, and, uh, you know, go fast. And Archie's done a lot of great things for, for New England motorsports as well as motorsports on whole. Definitely. And one thing, like, also, like, um, in addition, you know, to go fast racing, um, still being, you know, a team in a sport, um, we also have, like, Ryan Priest coming up through the ranks in NASCAR, mm -hmm. and now he has a full-time ride, too. So, you know, a lot of New England flavor coming into, the, like, the biggest uh, ranks of the sport. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really cool to see, uh, you know, these guys getting the attention they deserve and getting those opportunities. Um, and when you look at the success that, that Ryan Priest has had, like, um, you know, these mod drivers need to get more shots because it, it, it's really impressive to see what he's been able to do, um, you know, w with Gibbs. And then I think this year he's going to be really successful as well. Yeah. Um, and you yourself, you know, just started um, this past season with the mods. Um, yeah. Definitely something uh, you had a lot of success early on mm -hmm. um, in the season, a lot of good finishes um, through just a handful of races that you were able to race this past season. So. Mm -hmm. Um, definitely something that maybe when we um, take a break and come back, we'll talk about last season and kind of how you got to the ride that you're in today. Yeah, I'm really excited to talk about it. It's uh, it's gonna last year was a great year, and uh, this year is going to be even better. I guarantee it. Awesome. Well, we'll be we'll be right back with Spencer to uh, talk about um, his beginnings in racing and um, how um, he landed his mod ride that he has today. Hi, I'm Scott from Scotch Recreation. We just had the biggest month in our history. Why? We're selling campers at wholesale to the public, even the 2019s. So what did we do? We went out and bought a bunch more. Up to 40% off travel trailers and fifth wheels. Up to 35% off toy haulers. Up to 30% off motorhomes. You'll never see these prices again. Over 400 campers to choose from, all at wholesale prices. Scott's Recreation, Route 4 Turner and Route 202 Manchester, Maine. Hi, I'm Johnny Wolf. Here at 21st Century Motors, we've been in business since 1972 and we take pride in our work. We have a large selection of pre-owned vehicles that are clean and ready. I personally drive and state inspect every vehicle we sell. We're experts at getting your car financed, whether you have good, bad, or no credit. We purchase vehicles several times a week, so there's always plenty to choose from. Come on in and make a deal today at 21st Century Motors in Gorham or online at 21stCenturyMaine.com. 
Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by Scotch Recreation. Whether you're thinking about your first camper or looking to upgrade your current one, Scotch Recreation can help you. Get both our Route 202 Manchester and our Route 4 Turner locations and online at scotchrecreation.com. All right, so welcome back to Mainly Motorsports. I'm here with Spencer Morris, as we talked about before the break. And um, you're definitely a person that you, you know, are still young um, in, in the sport, but you've been racing for quite a long time. Yeah, I've been racing since I was nine. Um, I wanted my first start in a go-kart, and, uh, you know, I was, I was definitely hooked then. But, you know, I've always, always uh, been around the racetrack. I'm, I'm a third-generation driver. Um, my, my dad won a bunch of championships in the limited sportsman division um, at Oxford back in the day. Um, and uh, just kind of all I've ever wanted to do. I, it, I don't know what else to do on a Friday or Saturday night. And I feel like you're one of those people that like you race pretty much everything from like mm -hmm. a go-kart to like now being in a modified to you raced at Thursday nights at Beach Ridge for mm -hmm. a little while, which you said wasn't, wasn't the uh, best experience for you as a racer. <laughs> Absolutely love everything about Beach Ridge, except I could not drive Beach Ridge um, when I was in that Thursday Thunder car. Um, but luckily, uh, you know, I, 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 I finally started to get the hang of the place. Uh, of course, now it's not on the schedule this year, breaking my heart. But um, I, uh, it, yeah, I, I really have raced everything. Um, basically, I wanted to accomplish something. I want to race in it. I want to move up. I always want to, you know, um, keep moving forward and, and race against the best competition that I, that I can afford to. Um, and uh, so that's led me to a lot of different divisions, for sure. And um, so you say like um, you've raced at Beach Ridge versus mm -hmm. like Oxford, you know, mm -hmm. places where, you know, kind of that's where like the series is headed to the majority of races mm -hmm. at um, Oxford. So do you have like a favorite track over the course of the like Whichever one I'm winning at is <laughs> yeah. really my favorite. Um, <laughs> Oxford, I've had a lot of success at Oxford. Um, just uh, I grew up watching races there. It just comes natural to me. Um, you know, I, I had a lot of fun when we went, went to Groveton this year. Um, White Mountains are really a, a, a track that I'm that I'm really excited about going back to. Um, you know, there's uh, there's some that I'm scared to death of, like Speedway 95. Um, I've never raced there, but um, you know, I've, I've heard you know after the first two or three times you wreck, that after that it gets better. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, like now now today, like you're in a past mod, mm -hmm. um, and you've raced. Like most recently, like you've done like a super late mm -hmm. model, you've done the act tour. So mm -hmm. like, what attracted you to like the past modified division? The the, the hard thing with me is uh, I'm I'm pretty low buck. Um, you know, so when I was racing super late models, I had a great opportunity. I drove for the Aspire Hire program. Um, so they they built the car for me, and I just had to run weekly expenses. Well, weekly expenses for a super late model are ridiculous. Um, it, it just something I couldn't couldn't afford to do weekly anymore. Um, so we tried the act late model thing, we only, only had to race 10 times a year, but you're still racing against all brand new chassis and you know, all, everybody's buying eight tires a race and I could afford four tires and a 10 year old chassis. So um, it was really hard for us, you know, we, we had some competitive runs, but I was never that guy that, you know, could go out and win every time we showed up to the racetrack. Um, you know, now this, this, this modified division, um, it's got a good mix of racers, and you can do it pretty cheap. Um, other than my first race, I made money over my weekly expenses. So fuels and tires and my way in was paid for um, just in the purse money. So um, that's really what, what, what drew me to the, to the modified racing, and then they're just a blast to drive. It's really the coolest division. I really hope that we can get a lot, you know, some more cars and um, that you know, the, can, the series can continue to grow. And you talked about like being like a third generation driver. Mm -hmm. um, what was it like, like growing up like at the track, and then like how did you come to the decision that like, hey, this is what I want to do too for for a, a living? I I don't really remember having that moment where this is like what I want to do. I think um, when I was three and I was like running the golf cart into the side of the house, they pretty much knew that uh, I was probably going to be uh, it had something to do with racing. Um, you know, it's just always you know with. My dad was in the shop. I'd be sitting in the race car, turning the wheel, and pretending I was running the Oxford 250. So, um, just ever ever since I was around it, uh, I, I just wanted to be around race cars. And you have like a coolest memory from like growing up that like maybe like a first win or something mm -hmm. that you know that will like forever like resonate in your in your mind that, mm -hmm. as like one of the coolest moments that like in racing so far yet. Yeah, I, I, you know, honestly, I've had a lot of uh, you know cool wins myself. My favorite moment in, uh, in racing though was uh, 2002, the year before I started. 
Um, my, my dad and my uncle raced each other, ran into the back of each other, almost spun each other out, and they finished 1, 2, and 100 lapper at Oxford. And um, that, that was honestly the coolest moment. I just, it, you know, I love to race myself, but I just love the sport. You know, if I'm not racing myself, I'm helping, you know, Ray Christian or Jeremy Davis or Tasha Dyer at the track. Um, so I, I just want to be, I just want to be around race cars. Definitely. And, um, oh God, I don't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like it's, it's kind of crazy seeing like it's come for a full circle for like, how mm -hmm. does it feel for like, you know, your, your family that like did race themselves, like now mm -hmm. seeing you and like helping you have success at your level now? Mostly, um, we talk about, they talk about how they could beat me now. And, <laughs> um, you know, there's, there's a couple of nice mods for sale. I wish, uh, I, I wish they'd try it. Um, you know, it's, it's always been really competitive. I've had the opportunity to race against my dad three times. Um, I beat him two times and he wrecked me the other. So, um, it, it, you know, uh, me and my dad are pretty competitive and uh, my uncle and, and my dad raced against each, each other a lot. Um, and, you know, it was a lot of fun to watch those guys. They, they raced each other harder than they would race anybody else. And, uh, you know, that's, that's really cool, cool to see. Um, I think some of the, the, the new generation here has gotten a little bit soft. I like a little bit of bump and runs and, uh, and I like, I like to see some action. This, uh, this isn't drag racing. <laughs> and I feel like that goes to show that, like, no matter, like, who you are, like, you could be, like, friends, even family off mm -hmm. the racetrack, but as soon as, like, that helmet comes on, like, that competitive nature sinks in for everyone. Absolutely. Once the belts are tight, I don't have friends anymore. I, <laughs> it's, it's, it's all about, uh, you know, trying to, try and do your best you can, you can. And, uh, you know, we're both Joey Logano fans. Yes. And whatever it takes <laughs> to win, because I got a lot of guys in my pits that if, if I'm holding back, um, they're going to be pretty, uh, pretty mad at me at, at, at the end of the day. I got I to gotta be able to look them in the eye and say that it, I gave it all I had. <laughs> Very true. And, it, like, it, it's like, you know what, you might, you're always going to have people that, like, disagree with, like, mm -hmm. moves that you make on the racetrack, but it's all about, like, staying true to, like, who you are as a driver, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, I, and I've made mistakes on the racetrack, but, uh, and, and when I make a mistake, I'll apologize, but the, at the same time, um, it, if I didn't do anything wrong and, you know, nobody got wrecked by my doing, I, I, I'm not going to apologize, and uh, I'm just going to go uh, collect the check flag. <laughs> well, I heard it from myself, <laughs> Spencer Morris. <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's cool to kind of hear like where your beginnings in racing, mm -hmm. um, you know, have and how they've gone and like where, where it's led you to today. Yeah. Um, so definitely like maybe when, you know, might take a little break, get some word from our sponsors, then maybe mm -hmm. we can come back, talk about last season. Yeah. Um, getting your win um, in the past modified series and um, like how that felt as a driver, you know, coming into something new and having success early on. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, like I said, this uh, last last year was great. Um, and uh, really, really excited for uh, the next one. Awesome. So we'll be right back with some more with um, Spencer Morris. Hi, I'm Sean Moody. We take pride in our facilities, and at Moody's, it's what's inside that matters. We believe it's more than just the exterior looking good. It's what's inside that matters. Restoring the structure of your vehicle the factory specs is critical to your safety. I'm proud of our Moody's co-worker owners who understand the importance of protecting your valuable asset. And we all know what our most valuable asset is. It's what's inside that matters. Servicing differentials is virtually impossible. The confined space makes fill holes difficult to reach, and industry standard conical bottles are rigid and hard to squeeze. That combination makes for a messy job. Plus, you can't get all of the gear lube out of the bottle, so you have to buy more than you need to complete the job. And engineering your own solution only results in disaster. Not anymore. Introducing the new Amsoil Easy Pack. Easily access hard to service differentials. Easily squeeze out all of the contents. And easily stay clean while you do it. No more leftover fluid or inconvenient rigid bottles. No more trouble reaching difficult fill holes. No more mess. Amsoil Severe Gear in the new Easy Pack. The solution to all your problems. Another first from Amsoil. 
For a stocking dealer nearest you, call toll-free 877-761-8375 or visit 4seasonsynthetic.com. Hi, I'm Andy Austin with exciting news about a new division of Beach Ridge Motor Speedway designed to bring new people to weekly racing. Here's series founder Dan Wolf. Thanks, Andy. Our goal was to create cheap, easy-to-build race cars, bone stock production cars with a simple four-point roll cage and proper safety equipment. We've named them the 21st Century Motor Street Devils. Our 2017 rulebook and schedule are available at BeachRidge.com and at Street Devils Racing on Facebook. The future of auto racing has always been streetcar divisions because of the low cost. Some folks are building cars and sharing the driving duties. There's even an all-star car to allow celebrities to try out the Street Devil and a two-seat driver's ed car so you can take a few laps. Get information about our mentor program, low-cost safety equipment, roll cage kits, and videos on how to build one at Street Devils Racing on Facebook. So, form a team, build a car, and come join us this summer as we kick off the 21st Century Motors Street Devil Division at Beach Ridge Motor Speedway. Welcome back to Mainly Motorsports, and we're still here with Spencer Morris. Hasn't left me yet. <laughs> so, um, we talked a little bit about um, getting into the past modified division, mm -hmm. um, and you had a lot of success in um, what was just a handful of races. Mm -hmm. um, I know we, we've talked about it a little bit, but um, were the intentions at the beginning of the season were to try to run a full season, right? But it, cards kind of didn't play out that way for 2018. Yeah, we, um, we were starting to get my act break model together. Um, and uh, then I think we'd missed, I think we had missed the opener. Um, and we were kind of getting ready to race Lee with my act car. And then the opportunity came up that there was a modified for sale. Um, and it was the first one that Jeremy Davis had built. And so if anybody was going to have that car, I wanted it to be me. It hadn't been raced yet. Um, so we bought it. We kind of thought that it was going to be something that we could put together um, basically in a night. Um, then we got into it, and, and it needed a little bit more work. Um, so we kind of regrouped a little bit, um, kind of did a little bit ourselves, took it over to Jeremy. I said, I don't know what happened to this. Fix it. And um, then, you know, we went to we went to test it um, the first time. We were going to test at White Mountain. Um, I messed up, put the clutch in wrong, clutch wouldn't work. Um, so instead of going test at White Mountain, we went to Oxford. And uh, I come over the radio and I'm like, guys, think slow. I don't know what I'm doing. It, it, worst thing I've ever driven. <laughs> and uh, so I came in, Jeremy's like, well, you, uh, you turned the fastest lap of uh, of the year at Oxford, and I'm like, well, okay, no, I guess, I guess it's okay, then. We can go, we can probably make it work. Um, raced at Groveton a little bit. Um, I, th just some driver error there got me. Um, but then once we got to Oxford and, and, and Beach Ridge, uh, things really started going our way. And what are some like differences for you, like as a driver? Like you said, you didn't feel like too secure at first. So like, how? different and like difficult was it to like switch into like this completely different car for you yeah so i mean basically the last time that i'd raced oxford was was in a super late model so you know i i'm used to you know driving in deep the nose being pinned to the track and, and being able to you know the car almost driving itself um i got into the mod and you had to wheel a little bit harder and i was wheeling it a little bit too hard <laughs> um, but it was um it was really cool once you it's hard when you're going around the track by yourself. You don't have anybody to judge yourself off of. Then once I got around other cars, it was like, whew, yeah, we got something here. And talk to us a little bit about like the division. Like in, in recent years, like mm -hmm. there have been you know, driver two that have kind of dominated the division, and then mm -hmm. to come in and to win a race um, mm -hmm. at Oxford and to have like really good success in just the first like the few couple of races. Mm -hmm. um, What's that like to like jump in with veterans and you know kind of give them a little show there? Yeah, no, it's it, it was really cool. Um, you know, we raced five times and we had four top fives. Um, and if if it wasn't for my driving area at Groveton, I think we would have had a top five there as well. Um, and to be able to go out and, and beat Ben Tinker, um, and you know to to race with Bruce Helmuth and and, and Gary Shackford, um, you know, it was it was really cool to, to, to have that success early when you're racing against those kind of characters. Um, so, uh, you know, we, uh, we won at Oxford, finished second at Beach Ridge, um, and then had two other top fives after 
getting into a couple of messes. So, um, it, uh, yeah, no, it was, it, it was a really good year, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really excited for more of that this year, and hopefully I can be the guy that dominates this year. <laughs> And I feel like, um, talking about Beach Ridge a little bit, mm -hmm. um, I know that there's a lot of keyboard warriors out there, as yep. like both, both of us know, so there was a little hey, bit Stacey. of... Hey, <laughs> Stacey. There's a little bit of controversy like surrounding that that race, and what, what, what was your take on that whole racing ordeal with Ben Tinker? You know, um, so it, it, it was a... It, Beach Ridge has always created great racing, um, so... You know, the way that they started the pass miles, the fast guys start in the back and the slower guys start up front and, you know, the, the way short track racing should be. And, you know, me and Ben were kind of working our way up through the field. Um, and just it just happened if you got into the wrong line, you were back another spot. And so me and Ben have been racing back and forth. Um, and he was, he was up the racetrack and I shot it down underneath him. I don't know if it, it, his father didn't let him know I was there, or um, he thought I'd lift, or, or, or what he was expecting. Um, but I was into his door, and I didn't lift. Um, unfortunately, we made contact. He went up the track a little bit, and I continued on. I, you know, I was I was heading for the for the second or third spot. Then I wasn't concerned what Ben Taker was doing, and uh, I come around the track, and and uh, Ben and Jared Harrison were in the wall. And you know you never you never like to see that. Um, I just kind of moved on with it. I you know stuff stuff happens. Um, then after the race, Ben had some words for me, and I guess I I, I guess you're not supposed to run the points leader like that. Um, but I, it, it's the same thing about going back to, to to what I said earlier. If I don't take advantage of every opportunity that's there and and, and drive my heart out, I guess those guys that work on my car all week. If, if, if I say well you know I. I I probably could have won that, but I didn't take that opportunity. They're going to be like, well, we're going to go help them then, you know? So um, uh, I don't feel like I did anything wrong, um, but uh, I do like running my mouth a little bit too. <laughs> I feel like it's one of those things where, like, you know, he, he still won a championship, so he's still doing pretty, pretty good yeah. for himself. Yeah, <laughs> no, absolutely. And and I have no, I have, I, I have no hard feelings. Um, obviously, there's two tore up race cars, um, but uh, I just filled the hole. Yeah, and I think one thing that you said too, um, which is a good point, is that um, with with your division, um, you know, fast cars like start in the back. And I know mm -hmm. one thing that was really cool. I've told you this before too. To watch you racing mm -hmm. is the way that you can just like weave through the cars and make your way up to the front. That's kind of cool. It poses a challenge every single race where you start in the back and have to work your way up to the front. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's and, and that's that's what I love about short track racing. And that's and that's how it always was growing up when I was sitting in the grandstands at Oxford. Um, you know, I I really like the the, the, the point leader and the guy that's running second in points starting right next to each other in the back, and then you've got to get up through all the squirrels. And, um, you know, so I, that, that's always been, what's been exciting to me. And, you know, even, you know, at times when I didn't have the best race car, I think that I could make some of the better moves. Um, and uh, so I, I really like the way that they start them, and I wish that more tracks would go back to that way. Yeah, I agree too. And I think it makes even, like, for, like, a more level playing field too if you think about it because like that one person that has had a, like a couple of slow weeks and has to start in the front might have that one good week where they're just on fire kind of like um like Kate Ray that last race in Oxford mm -hmm. and you know just stay up there and win it all too. Yeah you know, she you know she did an awesome job and, and, and what a great ambassador to the sport that a 15 year old girl can uh, you know start start up front in the mod race and, and drive away um, and, and beat a bunch of guys that, that, have, that have been doing it for a long time. Um, Kate's a, a great like I said a great ambassador to the sport and, uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things, that's what the starting order does, is it gives somebody that maybe not, wouldn't be ready to drive from the back of the pack to the front, but it gives somebody an opportunity to, to, to pick up that first, uh, first W. And after the first one, they all come easier. Yeah, and I think that one thing that's also great about your division too is that you see people like Kay Ray, you know, 15 years old, mm -hmm. um, to people like Maddie Sanborn, who has been like racing for for years and years, people mm. like that, and then like other people like you that have done different divisions but are now stepping into modified divisions. So mm. there's such like like an eclectic mix of people in a division that it's really cool to watch how you all race together. Yeah, no, it was really cool this year too. Uh, I got to race against Wayne Allard. He made a return to modified racing, and he uh, actually raced for a championship. Um, in the past mod division in 2005 with my old man. Um, and so to be able to race a guy that, you know, my, my dad had some knockdown drag outs with was, was, was pretty sweet. 
Um, and it's, it, it's cool to see, you know, I, don't, I won't guess how old Wayne is, um, but uh, I gotta imagine there's a pretty good gap in between him and uh, Kate Ray's age. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely fun to see the division um, and how it played out in 2018. Mm -hmm. um, there's definitely some exciting stuff on the horizon with a different schedule mm -hmm. that just came out for the division. Um, so if you want to just stick with me for a little bit, maybe yeah. when we come back, uh, we'll talk a little bit about how your car's coming for next season yeah. um, and just the schedule coming up. Absolutely. All about it. Awesome. We'll be right back on Mainly Motorsports. Welcome to LST Landscaping, where we've been providing complete landscape solutions to all of Southern Maine since 1969. We specialize in year-round landscape maintenance and snow services, including weekly lawn mowing, seasonal cleanups, sweeping, mulching, and so much more. Many more customizable services are available upon request. Please call our office today at 207-878-1578 or visit our website, lstlandscapinginc.com. Ignition won't turn? Wait, don't tow it. It may just be a one key. Hi, I'm Jim Broadhurst, owner of E-Keys for Cars of Saco. At E-Keys for Cars, we'll diagnose your problem over the phone and give you a firm quote. No bait and switch here. Whenever or wherever you're stuck, E-Keys for Cars will come to you. Call E-Keys for Cars and Saco, the fast, affordable fix for your car key and lock needs. Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by... Four Season Synthetic. See them for all your AMSOIL product needs. Welcome to Mainly Motorsports. To order a copy of this show, send a check on money order for $15, including shipping and handling to Mainly Motorsports, 2 Main Street, Suite 17-103, Benefit, Maine, 04005. And please add the show number in the description of the show. Welcome back to Mainly Motorsports. Um, here with Spencer Morris. Um, just talked about um, his 2018 season in the modified division, which is pretty successful mm -hmm. um, for the races that you um, did compete in. Mm -hmm. um, but this year, you're kind of going all for it. So full race schedule coming up this year in 2019, right? Yeah, absolutely. We're going to race for the championship. Um, and, you know, I, I really think the, the, the odds are in our corner. Um, you know, we had, we had a lot of success there at the end of last year, and I think we're only going to be better this year. So um, going to race for the points championship. And, um, you know, I really feel like any time that, uh, that 34 mod rolls into the racetrack, uh, we get a chance of winning. And one, one thing, too, is that, like you talked about earlier, like great introductory division. Um, mm -hmm. One thing that we have seen in past years, unfortunately, with like the past mod division is that, you know, car counts have, mm -hmm. haven't been quite where they need to be. So do you think like in 2019, maybe we'll see some more cars on the track? You know, one thing that I was really excited about this year when I looked at the schedule um, I think we only have, we have like one Saturday night race. We have a lot of Sunday stuff. So that means that um, hopefully all the guys from Wiscasset, they'll come over and race with us weekly, or, you know, uh, on the tour. Um, and I, I really think we get a great schedule put in front of us. Um, it's a great division that's affordable to run. Um, so I, I really think that, uh, you know, whether it's this year or the year after, th this tour is going to grow and we're going to get the, the, the car counts that we really need. And um, how's your car looking so far for this season? I know you're planning on doing the, um, the show up in Augusta. Yep. Um, so I, it's kind of like crazy. Like I work with the team, like we're trying to get the car together. Mm -hmm. It's kind of crazy that race season's still like months away, but yet people are, you know, kind of need to get everything together for these shows. So how, how's your schedule? Oh yeah, we're, we're under the gun, um, but, but uh, we're making it happen. Um, the car just got back from uh, Sammy Goodens. He put, a, he put a beautiful Playboy blue powder coat on it. Um, and uh, he's actually still got a lot of specials out there. So if you guys are still, um, you know, you need your cars powder coated before the show, um, silver and gloss black are available half price. I went with the cheaper stuff with the with the with the, one of his uh, December deals, um, and it came out awesome. So um, we got it back from powder, and then we brought it over to Davis Chassis Works, and uh, we're we're bolting it together now. Um, so we got the tin in it. Um, basically, basically it's rolling. Um, should be throwing the motor in here uh, in, a, in a day or two, and uh, that's just hanging body. I think one thing that was cool about last season too is that like your car, I know like what it looks like on the outside like doesn't mm -hmm. matter in the long run of like how it races, mm -hmm. um, but your your mod was like one of those ones that like kind of stood out like every mm -hmm. every week like you saw it on track and it was like a nice looking car like any hints on like what what's in store for 2019? It's uh it's gonna it, 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 it's it's gonna look pretty sharp. Uh, I can't I can't give anything away, um, but I'm really excited. Um, we, uh, we have a, have a little bit more of a design this year and, uh, I'm, I'm really excited for everybody to come out and, and check it out. 
um, at the show, and then I can give them all the details on it. Um, you know, that was, it, it really is an awesome car, but when we got the car, it was hand painted, like normally hand paint is a good thing. This was like with a, with a roller for like your <laughs> walls in, in, in the office here. Like, it, it was ugly. The body looked nice, because Jeremy did a great job on the body, but, um, oh, it was, it, had some runs in the paint. It was it was pretty awful. So now that we got uh, we got it powder coated, uh, Playboy blue, and uh, having Jeremy hanging on the body on it, it's uh, it's gonna look pretty sweet. Awesome. And like you said, a different schedule coming up for this season. Mm -hmm. A lot of different racetracks. So there's a lot of Oxford on the schedule. So seven mm -hmm. different races at Oxford for mm -hmm. um, your division. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're going to a couple different like different tracks. So. No Beach Ridge, unfortunately, this year, like you said, but we still got Speedway 51, we've mm -hmm. got Speedway 95, Spud, which I'm excited about. I know not many people are excited to make like a five-hour trip up there, but I think it's a cool track, and you guys didn't weren't up there for this past year when they came back to race there, mm -hmm. um, and then White Mountain. So what are you mm -hmm. looking forward to getting to run? Um, I really need revenge on Speed 51. That hurt my feelings when, when I uh, ended up in the fence there that opening day, uh, or, or the first time out with the car. So I'm really looking forward to, to go back there and try to, um, avenge that race. Speedway 95 I am scared to death of. I watched uh, Dennis Spencer one time in a modified roll on the back stretch there. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I think I'm just going to ride the bottom there and try to survive that one. Um, Spud, I, I, I've never been up there. It's a long drive. Um, but I am, looking, I, I am looking forward to it. I heard that the race fans up there are absolutely unbelievable. Um, I make sure to pack my Austin Terrio shirt so I can fit <laughs> in up there. Um, but, you know, I, I heard the race fans are awesome, so that would be really cool. And, uh, you know, White, White Mountain's an awesome track as well. So, really, the, the only thing that, that uh, if I could build my own schedule, if there was a couple of races at Lee and a couple of races at Beach Ridge, that would be the absolute perfect schedule in my eyes. And is there, like, a track that you're, like, most looking forward to, like, of ones that, you know, you've, you race at Oxford mm -hmm. a lot, you've raced at Beach Ridge a lot, like, of these other four that you're going to that you're, like, most excited for um, to race at? I'm, I, I'm pretty excited for White Mountain. Um, that, uh, I raced there when I was running past Sportsman. Um, I raced at White Mountain and, and, and ran really well. Um, the last time I was there was in an ACT car, and we were, we were okay. But uh, the past modifieds, that's, that's my division, so I think I can... Uh, I, I think we can have a real good run uh, White Mountain. Definitely a lot of exciting things coming up. Obviously, everyone's goal is to you know, win races, win championships. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of your like, personal goals besides those for this mm -hmm. upcoming season? Um, win a lot. Yeah. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I, I really, um, I really want to win every time we unload. Um, and, and I think I'm in a division now, and I have, I have the equipment around me that I, I, really, I really think it's every time we roll in, I think we can uh, leave with the checkered flag. Um, obviously, that's probably not realistic. Um, but uh, at, at the beginning of the year, I told Jeremy, I said, uh, I want to go to Augusta, I want to win the show, and I want to win every show after that. So uh, I, guess, I guess that's the goal for now. And lastly, I know you've talked about Jeremy and everyone who's helped you out along the way. Um, with the division that you're in now. Um, so, you know, kind of giving the drivers the floor these like episodes throughout the winter. So who mm -hmm. are some of the people that you'd like to give a shout out and thank you to for helping you out along the way? Yeah, um, definitely Davis Chassis Works. They've done, they've done so much for me. Um, you know, really excited to have 290 Main Street on board. Uh, apparently if you drink enough bar, uh, beer at the bar, <laughs> you, they put a sticker on your car. So that was really sweet. Um, Rolf Corporation, where I work, gives me the, the time to, you know, go out and, 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 and race. Uh, enough days off. Um, Wilson Excavating, my family excavation company, um, Suburban Propane, um, and, and pro DNL Weatherization, um, my sister Whitney. Um, she's she's got a she's a uh, got a salon that she works for that that they came on board this year. Um, Troy Morris Trucking, my uncle. So um, all the you know all, all those companies that make it so that we can get to the track and then the. The, the people like Nick Poland that's come on this year um, to, to help do a little spotting. Um, and just the guys that have been with me since the start, uh, Ryan LeBroke, um, Adam Jocelyn, um, Luke Mowat, Will Peralt, um, uh, my old man. Uh, it just, it, it takes a lot of people to run a race team and uh, I've got the best people in the business. Awesome. Well, you definitely have a great team of people supporting you behind mm -hmm. you in 2018, 2019. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll be definitely exciting to see how you can uh, 
take off like your success in 2018 and carry that with you into this next season. Yeah, no, really, really looking forward to it, and I, I think that uh, that uh, that 34 car is going to be uh, holding the checkered flag, chasing the checkers uh, <laughs> quite frequently. Yeah, so we'll see this guy at the Augusta show coming up in just a few weeks, and uh, thank you for joining us today. It was really awesome. Yeah, thank you for having me. Real, it, it was a great time. Hope hope you have me back sometime. Awesome. And then uh, when you come back, well, you'll see Steve wrapping it up here on Mainly Motorsports. Football fans, have we got a deal for you. VIP Tour and Charter Bus Company is offering round-trip transportation to Gillette Stadium to watch the New England Patriots make another run for the Super Bowl. Ride in style knowing we're doing the driving. So if you've got a ticket, we've got your ride. It doesn't get any better than that. Just log on to VIPChartercoaches.com, click on the Browse Book Tour button, and book your trip today. It's that simple. Relax and leave the driving to us, and we'll leave the tailgating to you. Welcome back to Mainly Motorsports, and uh, what a great show. Talking about 2019, started off with Archie St. Hilaire, really excited about his, uh, his opportunity, and uh, those races sound exciting, you know, I'm going to tighten the pack up. Uh, 22 out of the 36 races, um, you know, going to be treated like uh, plate races, so pretty, uh, pretty neat. It'll be interesting to see right out of the box. Uh, race number two over at Atlanta. So uh, wishing him and his team the best of luck and spend some more with Amy, uh, having a lot of fun. And um, he's excited. He's a kid that brings a lot of energy, a lot of energy. So uh, uh, really excited for his uh, uh, team and the effort they're going to put forth in the 2019 uh, Pro All-Star Series Modified Division. But it's getting ready to kick off. January 11th to the 13th, right up there at the Augusta Civic Center, Northeast Motorsports Expo. Make sure you go to the website, northeastmotorsportsexpo.net. Uh, all the information, who's coming, that place is going to be jam-packed. The biggest, it has to be the biggest uh, display of cars we've ever had up there. I mean, uh, we got new tracks coming involved this year, the Bullring Bash, Manadnock, Manadnock coming in with Lee USA Speedway. Obviously, Star, Beechridge, Oxford Pass, Wiscasset, Speedway 95, Mini Cups, Go Karts, Legends, you name it, they're going to be there. Vendors, seminars, and your chance to, uh, your, your opportunity to take a chance to win the engine. You know, uh, 602 Crate Motor, sponsored by the Amazon Dominator, uh, Dominator Racing, uh, sponsored it. Trackside Racing Supplies helped us put it together and, uh, Somebody's going to win themselves quite a little product when we give it away in Portland, but uh, chance to buy your tickets right up there at Augusta. So going to be a great time. Hope you all enjoyed this week's episode of Mainly Motorsports. Uh, the new year is here. It's 2019. It's ready to kick off the show season and then race season right after it.